Just who are the 24 elders in the throne room of heaven? This is part 20 of the Revelation study. We've been moving forward in our study of Revelation, and right now we're in the throne room of heaven. And we see around the throne of God, there's 24 elders that are seated on thrones. And we have to recall from our previous study, part 19, we looked at the, what the symbolic meaning of the number 12 and the number 24 is. 12 is the number of the government of God's people. It was tied to national Israel. It was tied to the church, the number 12. And 24, we saw, is the completeness of God's people of all time, pre-cross and post-cross. Um, I've tagged this slide with a video of the symbolic meaning of 12 and 24. I would encourage you to look at that video to get the background. And then once you understand that, it'll be easy to go through the 24 elders and to identify who exactly they are. Also, please consider subscribing. There's a red button in the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much. And let's move on with our study. Okay, so here's the verse. Around about the throne were four and twenty seats. And that word seats is really throne. It's the Greek word thronos. So 24 thrones, and upon these thrones I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And each one, uh, Revelation 5, 8, each one had harps and golden balls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So we're going to look through these passages and understand who are the 24 elders, and the answer may surprise you. Why white raiment? Why crowns of gold? Why harps? Why golden balls of incense? So let's move on. Okay, so who are the elders? Normally we think of an elder as an old person, and that's what the Greek word uh, presbyteros means. It's an old person. And it was used to indicate the leaders of the uh, church on, in this world. The earthly church are called elders, and even today many churches uh, have their leaders, they call them el their elders or their elder board. And we see, I listed two verses here, 1 Timothy 5, 17 and Titus 1, 5, that indicate that this is the sense of the elders sometimes in the New Testament, that it's essentially the leaders of the church. For example, Titus 1, 5, Titus was uh, told to ordain elders in every city as he appointed the, the, him. So he would go and appoint leaders, it would be typically older men. Um, but this word elder can also represent all true Christians. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren, says 1 Timothy 5.1. So, in general, younger people shouldn't go out there rebuking older people. They should treat them as fathers. It's used in a generic sense, not as a leader of a church. And a very important scripture, 2 Corinthians 5.20, we're, and this is familiar, we're ambassadors for Christ. All Christians are ambassadors for Christ, but that word ambassador, it's the Greek word presbio, which is a, a cognate of presbyteros. It's an elder. All Christians are considered as elders. As we, we gain maturity and we have the Holy Spirit and we're all considered elders. So therefore, all true Christians in, in, to be elders in heaven is where people that when they die, they become elders. They're essentially older people, and we already start to see the sense of the meaning of the 24 elders that are around the throne of God in heaven. Uh, please consider subscribing to this channel. The red button is in the bottom right-hand corner. So let's move on. Okay, <clears throat> one of the things that uh, sometimes people teach is that only church leaders or only elders receive golden crowns in heaven. And that's not true. But they get that belief from this verse in 1 Peter chapter 5, where it says, The elders which are among you I exhort, feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, Jesus Christ, you shall receive a crown of glory that fades not away. And some people say, oh, well, it's our, it's our elders. They, there's something special. They receive a crown of glory. I've heard that taught in churches that I've attended. Um, and, and also, some, some therefore go on to believe that the 24 elders in the throne room, these heavenly elders, are just 24 very notable leaders of the church, whether from the Old Testament or, Old Te or New Testament, they believe that it's, it's 24 leaders that were in the church. Great men, they would call it. And that's what many people believe. 
But we find in the scripture does not support that. Because crowns are not only limited to old men, to the elders. And that reminds us of the importance of comparing Scripture with Scripture. So let's look at a few verses that teach very clearly that all Christians receive crowns. Here are two Scriptures we can look at. Um, All Christians receive a crown of glory. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. And all Christians receive trial. All Christians receive temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. So all Christians... God will make all Christians persevere. Life is hard. We all go through trials and temptations. But but in, in, it's for our proving that we're Christians and we will remain faithful because God is able. And we receive the crown of life which God, the Lord, has promised to them that love him. And we all love God. True Christians love God. And they love the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. So we're all to receive crowns. Uh, 2 Timothy 4, 8, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but to all, underline all, them also that love his appearing. And all Christians look forward to the return of Christ. So we see clear scriptures that teach that all Christians receive a crown. Okay, we also see that these elders cast their crowns before the throne. They worship him. They, they fall down and in, in prostrate before the throne, and they worship him that lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you have created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. The reason they cast down their crowns is because they, they see the beautiful sovereignty of God, that he is the creator. And for his pleasure they're created. For his pleasure. The creation is here to serve God. And, and we see later in Revelation 7.15 that therefore are they before the throne and serve him day and night in his temple. And this refers to the multitude from the great tribulation. But it's the same idea that they are before the throne and they serve him night and day in the temple. And he that sits in the t- temple shall dwell among them. So we, we see that the reason that ca- th- uh, crowns are cast before God is because although Christians, uh, which include the elders, have have uh, are like kings and priests, but they submit to God and they worship Him uh, in adoration. Okay, so we also see that Christians, all Christians, are made as kings and priests. So we think about the crowns that the twenty four elders have, and we remember that all Christians are kings, which means all Christians have crowns, and and, and they're 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 before the throne of God. When we die and we go to heaven, we're before the throne of God. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. A royal means kingly, a holy nation, a peculiar people. And we show forth the praises of him that has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And that's what we do before the throne in heaven. When we're a Christian and we're, we, we die, we go to heaven, we're before the throne, and, and we, we worship God. Ephesians 2.6, uh, God has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We're still in this body on the earth, but when we die, our soul and spirit go to be with Christ. And we're, we're in heaven before the throne. And we have our crowns. We're kings and priests together. We, so we, we, it's very close to the elders. It's the same idea. And we, we, we have to start thinking and realizing that those 24 elders, 24 is a, is a symbolic number, it was, represents God's people of all time that have died and gone to heaven. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.12, if we suffer, we shall reign with him. So to reign again is to be as a king. Okay, so now we're starting, we should be able to see that these 24 elders in, in heaven simply represent all God's people of all time. Uh, We also want to look at a verse where Jesus said to the apostles, I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father has appointed unto me. Again, we're we're priests and kings with Christ, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So we see that the twelve apostles were to sit on thrones, but it's not limited to them. It's not limited to the twelve disciples of Christ that were on the earth. So let's look at a few more verses on that. Okay, all Christians judge with Christ. So to be sitting on thrones judging the children of Israel means that all Christians judge. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? 
And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? All Christians judge. All Christians sit on those thrones. That's why the 24 elders are just simply a representation of all Christians, all people of Old Testament, all God's people who have died and gone to heaven. That's what they represent. Do you ever notice in the passage in the throne room of heaven that, that it doesn't list other Christians? It t just talks about the 24 elders because they represent all, all, all God's people that have gone to heaven. Another verse, Psalm 149, Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. And a two-edged sword in their hand. They're to judge, to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. That's why they sit on thrones. All true Christians are kings and priests sitting on thrones before, before God. We cast our crowns before, before God. We worship him day and night. And the saints are God's set-apart people to do just that, that thing. Okay, we also see those 24 elders in heaven. They wear white clothing. And sure enough, that's what we find about Christians. They'll be in white clothing. The marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she'd be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. Christians are in white. They're there to be in clean, per beautiful white clothing. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Ephesians 5, all Christians are cleansed. We're cleansed from filthiness. Husbands, love your wives as Christ has loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Our clothing is clean. It's bright and, and beautifully clean in the eyes of God. And again, those 24 elders just symbolize all God's people of all time. Okay, and, they, and they, these elders also have harps in heaven. And we see that God's people have harps. Uh, so let's read the passage, Revelation 5. When he had taken the book, the four beasts and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps. And they sung a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. So we see the 24 elders are before the, thr the throne of God with harps and, s and song. And we find that that's what Christians do too. All Christians that go to heaven uh, sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving, sing praise upon the harp unto our God. Psalm 147, 7. That's not limited to just 24 leaders of the church or leaders of Israel. That, that, that has to do all together with all true Christians. Which, and that's what the number 24 symbolizes. Uh, Psalm 81. Sing aloud unto God our strength and make a joyful no noise unto the God of Jacob. Take a psalm and bring hither the timbrel, the pleasant harp with the psaltery. Again, we have harps. And before God, singing the new song that we're given to sing. Okay, and finally, golden balls of incense. These 24 elders have these golden balls full of incense. But that also applies to all God's people. We, we find in Psalm 141 that our prayers, uh, let my prayer be set forth the, to thee as incense. As incense. Our prayers as, are as incense. So these 24 golden balls are simply the incense of all God's people of all time with all their beautiful prayers and they're contained in golden v balls which symbolize the great value of prayer how important prayer and we're to pray without ceasing without ceasing all day long we're in and out of prayer with God oh Lord what should I do in this situation Ezekiel 20 41 I will accept you with your sweet Savior and we're like a sweet savor in front of God. And that's how our prayers are, as we pray to God in humble obedience and humility, knowing that we need his help. Okay, so a summary of the 24 elders. The elders represent all God's people of all time that have died and gone to heaven. They're in heaven with God, and the 24 elders symbolize them. It's not limited to just a special elite group that gets to sit around the throne. All Christians are before the throne of God. Twelve symbolizes God's people, and 24 is the conglomeration of God's people prior to the cross and after the cross. It's God's people of all time. God had his chosen people in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. It's all God's people. The middle wall has been divide, taken down. It's there's no Jew or Gentile. We're all one in Christ, one in the Lord, the, the, the Heavenly Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. All Christians reign with Christ and sit on thrones. All Christians receive crowns. 
all Christians sing a new song on a harp and all Christians pray. Please uh, stand by for the next video. What are the seven lamps of fire? Uh, and, and, and in that passage, it talks about there's seven spirits of God. So we're going to look at that in our next video. Please consider subscribing. There's a red button on the bottom right-hand corner. There's an icon on the next slide. And thank you very much for watching this video.